Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Book Club. I am one of your two hosts, Bricky. Joined alongside me is DK, face first in the parchment pages of history. Mm. I guess the Black Library history. Whatever. Sure. And we're going to be chatting about the lovely Black Library contributions that are brought about in the world of Warhammer 40K. Before we start, if you'd like to support our podcast, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash ridiculous, where you can find posters, bloopers, and all kinds of other great stuff, including access to our Discord that has a ton of wonderful community members. And at the 20K mark, we will have a great fantasy episode on the Skaven done by our boy DK. So patreon.com slash that's ridiculous. Also, make sure to check out the merch at orchidate.com. Love the merch, baby. If you like to pick up and have not picked up one of the music prints, the music of the third art prints, they are, of course, still available, as well as the brand new monthly poster, Moment of Peace, where the nice, nice little guardsman thing going on there. So... Um, also, for some reason, people have been buying a ton of like little guy merch. Um, oh, good. Yeah, I don't really know it's why. Good stuff. It's it's like it's just happening. So, I mean, cool. But uh, yeah, it's just it, I, I don't know why. It's, I don't know why it's been very random. But hey, cool. It's um, just a little merch. Just a little merch. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, book club. Book club. Book club. Assassinorum Kingmaker. Uh, arguably one of the lesser than stellar names for a book. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it gets the point across, you know. It's nothing too flashy. It is it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. It, no frills. That's just that's what happens. That's what I, they try to make happen. But it is true. And uh, written by Robert Rath, who is well known for his other work, The Infinite and the Divine, a mm, mm, uh, mm. exceptionally solid and arguably considered one of the best 40K books written. Um, justifiably, I, yep. Yeah, I'd argue justifiably. Uh, a Necron book that, well, <laughs> Necron books being very uh, rare but incredibly good. Mm-hmm. And yep. uh, and yeah, go, and go watch our review on it after you're done here. Indeed, yeah, we that's right. We have a book club on that one too. Yeah, yeah. I guess not really a review. It's just our thoughts. So. <clears throat> oh yeah, book club or whatever. Whatever. Um, but besides that, uh, today is the Assassin's Norm book club, and uh, obviously we will be getting into spoilers. It is a book club discussion. Uh, but before we get into spoilers, a really quick overall. Uh, Thoughts on the book, DK? I I quite enjoyed it. I I was thoroughly enamored with it. Loved the characters. Loved the introduction to the characters uh, and and all of their. The, each one of them is a nice little like. Here's what this temple is all about. So that was that was good. And then boy, that final act is an absolute uh, shit show. It is just all over the place, and it is just wild and crazy action that just never stops, and and it's, whoo, it, it is a uh, it is something. Uh, but you yeah. would you you'd say that you thoroughly enjoyed the book? Oh, absolutely! I I, I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed the book for sure. I are I guess we're both in agreement. I really really liked this book. Yeah, I think good. it is one of uh maybe it in the top ten of of Black Library books I've read. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, cause obviously we take the Night Lord trilogy, we put it at the top cause that's where it belongs. Yeah, and great. then, and then you have like infinite of the divine. Uh, I love the bloodlines a lot. First heretic, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, you know, you know, twice the King yep. up there, Gaunt's sure. ghosts. And, but I, I put it I like, I definitely think assassin arm is up there. It, top yeah. 10. Maybe well, I don't know if it breaks the top five, but it's it's definitely up there in in terms of like nice books. Yeah, I, I honestly say it's a top ten. Robert Rath has uh, I, I would not say it's as good as Infinite Divine, but I, I think I'm comparing like a nine point five to like a nine point two. Like it's it's <laughs> semantics at that point. Yeah, it I, is I, yeah. incredible, and it's it's interesting too. Because okay, spoilers now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The premise of the book is the three assassin temples. We have the, well, 
the vindicare or the mm-hmm. uh vindicare as the the va mentioned yeah um, i can't remember what the names of the other two temples are i i i know what cone and sycorax do as those but i don't remember what their temples names are uh there is the caladus which is the shapeshifting mm. and then there's the vanus which is a uh, cyber hacker okay gotcha uh, um and they they are tasked with a impossible mission, which is <laughs> go to a planet, kill the high monarch of the planet who is permanently entombed in his own night suit yep. and cannot be removed. You are not allowed to harm the night suit in any way. Nope. And no one is allowed to know who did it. And nope. you need to appoint a, a successor monarch to stop civil war. Yeah, to stop civil war and make sure that they actually answer the Imperium summons to go to war. Kill the guy in the night suit. Don't damage the suit, though. And he also, by the way, he never leaves it. He never leaves it. He is permanently entombed in there. It is a insane <laughs> requirement. Yeah, it, it is an absolutely impossible task. Um, uh Oof. And uh, well, I, I must say it does take some some turns. Um, oh wow! It oh boy, does it <laughs> it gets so much harder than that. It uh, it, it really <laughs> does. I I think a lot of people described it as Mission Impossible. Oh yeah, it definitely That's pretty takes much a what turn it is. for yeah. It honestly it does feel like forty k Mission Impossible because like for a, a majority of the book. They're doing all the prep work and they're planning and they're trying to make sure they've got every angle set out, you know, that the that their dupe is going to be just so. And and then it just kind of. It, it's it. really the um the first half, right, is like all just prep prepping work. Honestly, I feel like it's like the first almost like 75 percent of the book feels like it's the prep. And then the last 25% is just like balls to the wall like action, right? I think I think about halfway through they land though. Oh, okay. And things get a little bit like kind of calm. Uh yeah. and then like the last 25% is when um Wraith decides to make it make his moves. Yeah. yeah. Uh because because the, the three main right? the tournaments, yes. The, the, there's three four four main characters. There's Epsilon Wraith who is our Vindicare, Vindicare assassin? Yep. Um, one kill away from fifty kills, allowing him to <laughs> uh, what was it, Sakarian Primus? Yeah. Um, pick his own targets, choose his own stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, a huge advancement. Um, yeah. Then you have Sikatrex, which is or Sikarax. Sikarax, which she's is a, she's a polymorph. Yep, the Caldus assassin. Mm-hmm. Um, great introduction to her. <laughs> where you think she's the woman in uh, sleeping with a guy, but turns out the woman is the gene stealer. Yep, she's a gene stealer, and and Sycorax is actually the the like a fat governor or something, and yeah, just uh, yeah. polymorphs out and absolutely slaughters that gene stealer. And then you've got the uh, then you have Cone, who is your uh, nerdy hacker type. Um, but she's also like the creepy nerdy hacker who doesn't really view people as people and rather as like, like code. Yeah, she's weird. She's very weird. And then you have, um, oh crap. I thought it was an R. Who's the night guy Rackan? again? Rackan. Um, uh, Renolius, or uh, Renolius Rackan, mm-hmm. um, who is a, uh, free blade night pilot who oh, assumed. Well, yeah, of the of the Knight Armager Jester, who assumed was attempted to be assassinated by uh, Yavarius Cow, High Monarch of the Planet of Dominion, mm-hmm. um, and went to go be a free blade, and uh, is now kind of just a drunkard. Yep. And the, um, the book starts off with him. Uh, he was he he was gonna beat a knight in his armager. Yeah, well, he was gonna be like a gallant in yeah, his he, armager. What is it? What was it? It was Typhoon's Teeth or something. It doesn't matter what the knight's name was, but it was a cool name. And it was something like the uh, the the hip joint was malfunctioning, and he knew about it, and he was like taking advantage of it, and he was about to win. They're like, "Oh no, call off the match," because they didn't yeah, want him in a knight. They didn't want him being have too much power. Yeah, I I must say the I I was I walked in this book expecting to be like getting buying all the assassin models. 
and I left ready to buy all the night models. I was going to say, yeah, I I left wanting to buy a bunch of knights and a bunch the, of armagers and stuff. Yeah, this is one of the better night books out there. It was I was genuinely fascinated by night politics, which is a feat to, <laughs> to, for a Warhammer book to get me interested in, in politics. Night politics. Yeah, well, it's a little different. Right? It's a little different it is politic politics. But yeah, because the the planet is Dominion and it is a. What was it? It was Strider was supposed to be the colonization effort. God knows how long ago, like 15,000 yep. years ago. And they got warp screwy and got lost in the warp. Yeah. And so Rao took over the sub faction and then Strider uh, came out of the warp and was like, this is our planet. And they both technically had decrees of ownership of the planet that were technically enforceable. Yeah. Because the the warp fuckery was like, well, we we've only been gone like a second. Well, but to us it was like fifty years. But yeah, but we have the thing. Yeah, but we have the thing, and yeah. So both and, had had claim. And so then they had like a nine year war, and then eventually I think I think I like the age of strife happened, or something yeah. like that. And therefore they they called a ceasefire, and now live in the northern and southern half. And Strider are a bit more noble. A bit more like calm, yeah. And, and Rao is a bit more like rambunctious and like like uh, violent, yeah. Uh, but not in like a bad way. More of like um, like Strider is is a little bit more like we must maintain chivalry, <laughs> and Rao is like is like the games fight fight you know fight, fight the game yeah tournaments um, hold another one. And so uh, Renolius Rackan is the son of a Strider mother. And the uh, Strider mother, right? And then the Rao father. Yes. Uh, Hathaway is his mother. Right. Uh, and no, his no, not later. Right? Not Hathaway. I thought her name was. Um... Oh, wait, no, you're right. Yeah. Barrett. Uh, well, I think it's. Is it Hathaway? Yeah. No, it's not Hathaway, is it? I thought it was. I thought it was Hathaway that was his mother. Baron. And she rides Greyhound. She rides Greyhound. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I think you're right. Baron. I, th- I think I thought. Huh. I didn't think the name was Hathaway. Yeah, you're right. Um, her, her her mother, known as um, to be the foulest mouth on Dominion, <laughs> where if you ever wanted to strip a knight's paint, you would simply get in an arguing match with Hathaway. Yeah. <laughs> it stripped the paint right off of it. Yeah, and, and she doesn't have, like, some special name because it's just like, oh, yeah, it's Hathaway. Like, there could be any other... Like you, you can't confuse her with anyone. She doesn't need any any fancy schmancy titles. It's just it's Hathaway. I could have sworn the knight's name was something else. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh well, yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Whatever. Someone in chat will tell us. It's fine. Yeah, probably. Uh, but yeah. we'll just say Rackan's mom. Okay. Um. But uh. Yes. So Strider Rao relations are really rough. Uh. And so there is always like a back and forth issue. And the thing that we're that we're assuming is that the Renolius. No, Renolius is him. Um, oh crap! Uh, Cow, the the high monarch. What's his beginning name? Oh yeah. Um, I just said it. I I I don't know. It's Yvarius. Yvarius. Oh Cow. yeah, Yvarius Cow. It's weird too, because like in the book they make him like every chapter has a quote from him, and, and like his his reciting of the oaths, and he sounds like a noble good king like he doesn't sound mm-hmm. like a tyrant and this whole time i'm like man what why why, why are we assassinating him? he sounds just he sounds like he's into like fair play and fair rule treat your people with respect you're the king you lead the people you're supposed to be on and i'm just like man what happened and and, and that that's all excellent excellent setup oh yeah which is super fun because because uh, that was the thing, right, is that Gilliman requested knights for aid. There's a particular chaos virus going around that is affecting all Skatari and people with like implants and stuff. Yep. The and conqueror worm. The conqueror worm. And uh, the in, in the region and the knights are not affected by this because of their God knows how old Dark Age tech <laughs> that these knights are. Uh, and so they need the knights to help with this stuff, but they have not answered Gilliman's aid for war. Yep. And several so it's, 
requests. Right. And so they assume that the secession is being spoken of with the high monarch cow. Um, and granted, there is plenty of secession discussion going on. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> once they make landfall and they, they're at that party, it's like, oh, wow, you guys are damn near heretical about this. Uh, some of them are, some of them kind of argue about it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, that was the, so that, that's why they believe that there is a, and then secession would mean civil war possibly. And they need the Knights. So they yep. need to maintain relations, maintain Strider Rao relations and get Knights to serve the Imperium. Yep. Cause if the Knights are going to fall, they should fall at the, uh, at the behest of the Imperium, not Indeed. a civil war where they're fighting each other. And honestly, like, Everything about this this entire book is just really good lore for the knights. Yeah. I I like um the whole idea is that Rackhan is this disgraced knight or whatever, and Cicatrix or Cicatrix is gonna um p- become him. Yeah. Be him and and take over the knight, uh the knight suit and has to have a problem mm-hmm. like mentally, you know? Yep. And it's a it's a whole thing. It is a whole big thing. Like she has to, like you actually learn how, like uh, um, the pilots, like when they first get into the suit, all the stuff they have to go through, and talking with the ancient ancestors, and and like you, you can pilot a night suit manually. It's stupid, and it's not going to be anywhere near as effective. Uh, but it's it's really fascinating watching like the process of like trying to like get this thing to move and how much you have to pander to the ancestors. It was what a nine hour straight, like <laughs> debate and questionnaire with the ancestors before she was allowed to move Jester. It's crazy. Yep. Basically, basically things like that. And, and then she got one thing wrong, one little thing, one thing wrong in the entire answer. Was like, stop. stop. And they started like, you're, you're a trying traitor to kill her. after all. Yeah. Practically trying to kill her via her uh, her neural implant, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, and it's really because all the old ancestors are like talking in this hushed, whispered voice. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's fascinating. People forget that knights are actually like they they don't move like Pacific Rim robots. They move like transformers. Like yeah, they are incredibly mobile. mobile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they 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 roll. They they do like they do jumps. They they spin. They they dive. Yep. Like knights are fast. They are mobile. They are extremely quick. And and because of that, like when you think about Pacific Rim robots, you think about like Titans. They yeah. move in more of like the er mm-hmm. er thing. The giant cathedral titans. Whereas the yeah, the knights like really move quick. So but if you want to interface with a knight without the um, neural interface, then you're gonna move it like a Pacific Rim robot where it's really stunted and poor. Yeah. If you don't have the ancestors with you, then it might move like a like a titan. And and she was trying to convince the ancestors that she was Rackan and stuff. And I remember at the the last ancestors were like, "We don't think he's Rackan." And it's like, "Well, what is your proof?" It's like, "We have no proof. It's just a hunch." It's like, "Well, this court <laughs> finds you waning if you have no proof. We must continue." The, like. And well, even the ancestors were like, this isn't the first time you've done this. Shut up. Like, you do this all the time. I think it was because like, it was like a Rao group. And yeah. so the Strider group was like, be gone. I, 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 did, I did like that where it started moving the knight and, and they whispered in her ear like, he stumbles. Like, he has a head injury. <laughs> Look at his dumb leg. He's broken. He's broken. Of course he's moving weird. He's... Uh. It, it was it was pretty funny in a weird way, but um, yeah, I, I will say something to be noted. Uh, the assassins in this book are very nerfed. Oh, uh, wow. Th- those three are nerfed. hundred percent. They are very nerfed. Uh, remember the fighting that Cicatrix <laughs> had to do? She is the yeah. same assassin that fought Talos. Oh yeah, she would be, wouldn't she? Yeah. So the, oh, the assassins. So I guess somebody that could duel with Talos. Yeah, I guess. I guess yeah. she is a little nerd, isn't she? Yeah, and like, and like, even even the Vindicare assassins, like, like a one punch would would break someone's throat. You know, like oh. like shatter all their ribs. You know, they they are tough. They they are far and above 
incredibly fast. Like, basically, because um, Wraith was more of just a really good sniper. Yeah. And, and, and you know, he was very quick. Like, there's that uh, ending scene where he, like, uh, what is it, like, bombs his entire stairwell yes. full of, like, mines and traps and claymores. Mm-hmm. Um, like he has cool stuff like that. He's a really good shot and everything, but there was that time when he got like crowded by, by people, like they were all jumping on him. I, I'm pretty sure a real Vindicare assassin would just like bust out of that and break throats. Wow. That's, that's crazy. Cause the whole time I was like, man, Absalom Ray, this kind of OP, like he seems like, damn, like these Vindicare are crazy and he's a weak one. I, I think the, the assassins in this book, I think, are nerfed. For for the most part, when the assassins are talked about in the real lore, the ones here are a bit nerfed. And I think it's yeah, acceptable because... Yeah, for the purpose because, of storytelling. Too, exactly. Because, for the book. <clears throat> yeah. Although I um, did like that one where it was like... Because um, there were several times where I thought Wraith was dead. He was like... They had him dead to rights. Like, uh, what was it? What was her name? Ooh. Drask had a gun to him. I was like, okay. And they were like, oh, yeah, the gun fired. And I was like, well, that's it for him. He just took a bullet to, to the brain. And it's like, nope, he's fine. Set off the explosion. Everything's cool. And then when he was getting swarmed, it was like, oh, yeah, there, there's his mask. Oh, he just got liquefied by a night lance. He's dead. It's like, oh, no, he put the mask on someone else. It's like, you can't kill him. I, I was, I was, I read like the part where, um, Sigatrix shot him, or Sigatrax shot him with the the Night Lance because uh, the uncle was like bondsman linked and oh, was like yeah, yeah. practically forcing her hand. Yep, she that was um, no choice because they were uh, Armager and Knight are so heavily linked that he dominated her will. Pretty much, I, I do like that because that's a very um, uh, that's a very uh, in game yeah. thing as well. If you run a big knight, you give buffs to small knights. Oh yeah 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 okay. It's 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 pretty fun the Bonson abilities, but they they nice. were a bit nerfed. Um, though I will say, uh, Wraith's aiming was not nerfed. His 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 accuracy <laughs> was very much proper. Uh, I think it was more his physical strength that was actually brought down okay. a little bit. Yeah, his aim was top notch. We shot the guy in the head through two bulkheads. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Ooh, she. There there was a lot of good stuff like that. Um, yes. But uh, I, I really liked the night stuff, too. I, one of my favorite parts of the book is the party. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And they're just chilling. They have such fun, like, little banter and discussion. Like, whenever they're, they're arguing about something and they want to, like, put it behind them, they always say, banish it with a tap. And they, like, clink their glasses <laughs> together. Um, yeah. There's a part where when they're discussing, like, secession, some dude's, like, eating quail. And, he's, <laughs> and he just throws the bones on the ground, and then some surf like crawls up, grabs the bones, and removes them. Like, thank you, my lord. Very, very nobility party. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, Someone the, always dies at these parties too. Make sure it's not you. Yep. They always uh they they got in like a duel or something. Yep. There's some sure people did. got into a duel and someone died. Um, a cousin and yeah. Actually, at that party, nobody nobody actually did die. They died after the party. After the party, yes, they did. But uh, pseudo Rackhand stopped the duel before anyone could die because they thought it would be a oh yeah you know you this you make yourself more visible and you put yourself higher up in the list and you know yeah I I also I liked um I, I will say the the audiobook had some kind of poor editing did you notice oh, really? did you notice any part where like it, it skipped or like the lagged or there was issues like that none that jumped out at me. It okay, maybe it's just me, but it felt like there will be a there was a little bit of, of poor editing or poor adjustments to it that that kind of bugged me. Um, no, I thought the yeah, audio book really could have been a little it. better. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's just me. Maybe, um, or maybe I didn't wasn't looking out for it either. So I don't know. I, either or, but I I will say I just always I find it hilarious when. Whenever uh, there's a VA for an audiobook, because you know most VAs that do this stuff are British. Yes, um, yes, they are. They oh, and then you know they they have like a a pretty classic like flat accent for most characters, and then <laughs> and then eventually Rackhan is getting like tortured by some militarum guy, and he mm-hmm. or like some ex militarum guy, and he goes full stop hard into the <laughs> the militarum forties British accent. 
I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta hit it. It's it's really fun. I I like that part too. It kind of gave me more respect for Rackin. He was a uh, trying to get information out from the mercenary guy, and he was like really holding his own. Oh yeah, and he what was it? he dropped like hot coals on his on his nuts on his nuts. Yeah, it's like damn, dude. Easy, yeah. easy. There was God. a lot of that. I like Gwen. Savage. Gwen was pretty cool. His like uh, best oh, girl, yeah. Gwen. Mm-hmm. She was fun. She's the um the mechanicus. The the little tech adapt person that yeah, helps a little with tech the thing. Person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked the. Uh, I, I like I like that a lot. That was a um that she was she was a fun character. Kind of added a bit a bit to it. Yeah, she was alright. I don't know why she kind of faded into the background for me a little bit. Yeah, she's a side character. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really know. I don't. I didn't really remember too much about her. Well, except the 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 big twist at the end, right? And when she kind of pops back into being. Hey, guess well, what I found out? Well, we might as well go with that. Yeah, so, I guess we might as well. Yeah. The last act is just like pure action, like hardcore oh, yeah. action movie action, which is you know the point. Yeah, um, I would have loved to have watched a series that just made that into a big brawl. Oh man, I, we did have a little bit of a difficulty keeping up with certain bits of the last act. I won't lie. Um, yeah, it was particularly it was, the night fights. It was, it was, there was, it, it switched so many times. Like, it would go from Rackan trying to find his vantage point, uh, to... Or Wraith. Wraith, right. Uh, uh, to Sika, 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 Sika Tricks, uh, doing her thing, uh, uh, Cone is off doing her thing, and, and Rackan is in the catacombs learning about his dad, and it's, it's just... It shifts between all four of them so often that it's like, okay, all right, what, this is great, but holy. What is the duty of a wounded knight? What is the duty of a wounded knight? I love how he found, finds out just by ranting at his dad, like, you left me in dishonor. What is a, what should I, I don't know. What am I supposed to do? Rise from my name, rise from my blood, rise from your blood. That's right. It's like, what? What? Bada bing, he found out. Yeah, just by ranting at his dad for leaving him with no for, answers. For, for dying, for drowning <laughs> in his own blood. Yep. Well, uh, to be fair, his dad died an honorable death, protecting the uh, the crown of dominion. Kind of. He died a slightly dishonorable death because he interfered with the duel. Oh, that's true. That's true, because the crown of dominion was technically dueling with Dawn of Slaughter. I, I love how his mom bitched about that. It's like, you're a stupid father, dies a hero, and now I can never complain about him. Hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, what a bitch. She, she, well, you know, yeah, for a couple of reasons. Um, yep. But uh, we, so we, we find out, so Wraith is out and about, and it's during the games, and he just kind of goes, fuck it. And he yep. runs up onto the crown of Dominion, Shoots six rounds into the, like the the capsule holding the uh, holding cow, mm-hmm. and pull and, and uh, runs out of bullets, but breaks the the glass and decides to just pull him out by his throat and strangle and him. Strangle, to death. <laughs> and he just pulls out this wet, purple, fleshy, dead mass of nothing. Yep, yep. He pulls out the. It, it, he basically just pulls out a corpse that's been stewing in there because he's like, uh, huh, this thing's actually been dead a long time i didn't i didn't do this i didn't so, kill this guy uh, uh, oh so there's it, it's a bit it's a bit of an exposition dump at the end and that's one of my few complaints about the book is i think the yeah. what happened is takes a while cohen's doing like the interrogation and all that mm-hmm. uh, but the overarching thing is that fighting dawn of slaughter and almost losing infected him the crown of dominion with the conqueror worm virus yep and Ivarius cow high monarch of dominion was in, is what is what we realize is actually a really good leader a is great a guy extremely good leader supremely good guy and he was actually fighting off the conqueror's worm to make sure it didn't take control right the whole time until his death yep um and 
so in reality, there was actually a succession. What was the trader house called again? Morvane. House Morvane. There was a trader house kind of in their midst. And that was like the secessionist kind of sort of. And in reality, there was accidentally a uh, they tried to fix the the Crown Dominion yep. with the tech adept who thought she was working with an iron hand. So was probably working with an iron warrior. Yep, because they because these backwater folks have probably never seen an Astartes, so they wouldn't know iron hands from iron warriors, which I always get mixed up too. In fairness, I, I I can't even I can't call them backwater because they're they're far from backwater. True, they're not, but they've probably never seen the Stardies. Right. As most people probably haven't in 40k. Which has expanded the Conqueror Worm worse because of the bondsman abilities. Um they yeah. even tried to force Rackan into an infected armature, which was horrifying to, to oh, read. Yeah, into Red Sky. It was almost like the 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 connection tendril was alive and it was like strangling him and trying to force its way into him. Ooh, yeah, it was icky. Yeah, it was really nasty. Did not like that. Mm-mm. Um but uh yes, yeah, so that was the the whole point was that the Conqueror Worm would then spread across yep. the way. And so then it became like a three way war between the loyalist knights the Conqueror Worm Knights, and then a successionary group of uh, like serfs and slaves as well, yeah. all at the same time attacking at the end. Yep. Um, and so that was what happened is the Crown of Dominion. Eventually, when Kyle was dead, they put in a new guy, a fine guy yep. into the new knight who eventually was then corrupted by the conqueror worm and then just started murdering everybody <laughs> immediately once he went in it was during like his, the 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 coronation right he gets into the knight suit and he's like oh all this this and by the way we're going to war with the imperium and gilliman can eat a fat one and it's <laughs> like uh oh <laughs> uh oh and then he just Opens fire on civilians with a Castellan knight, right? Right, which is a gigantic volcano lance <laughs> and, and goddamn plasma decimator cannon. Yep. And, and uh, then apparently, uh, like, it's like every knight. What was it? Like, every knight is actually infected by the Conqueror's Worm and they're actually traitors. A lot of them are. Not everyone, but... Um, a lot of them, yeah. If but they were, like, like, bonded to cow or something, they turned out infected or... Or they were just traitors anyway because they they saw Morvane as the better option because yeah. um, they were secessionists. It's like it's like a combination of both, like the traitors and secessionists kind of are together. Yeah. Um. But uh, Rackan's mom is one of the main uh, traitors, mm-hmm. as well as his uncle, uh, yeah. too. And so the the final act of the book is a crazy crazy situation where. <laughs> Um, oh goodness, it's so many things at once. It's Rackhand going down and finding the old folklore knight, the Leviathan knight, the, um, like the storybook. Yeah. Which the, is the mystical Leviathan that was actually piloted by his dad. Or something like that. I think it was piloted by his dad because he had to he had to do the rise from your bloodline, and then it was like, oh hey, guess what? And it's like and, there's Leviathan, which is so baller because it's my favorite knight ever. It's a knight valiant with the giant thunder coil harpoon, <laughs> which is so fun. Yep. Um, so then he comes out stomping around with that, and yeah. then Wraith is up at a super high vantage point, who has mined like the entire stairwell. And yep. is aiming his gun down the range in which Sycorax uh, is using her knight to fight the crown of Dominion as the tiny little armature Jester. Yep, and and she's doing well, but but she can move Jester like perfectly at this point, right? So she is just bobbing and weaving. She's quick. She's fast. She's hitting it from every angle she can, and so. And, yeah. and there's also after that, there's like the because uh, I, I think she kills the new guy. By basically like grabbing him and lifting him up into range <laughs> to have uh, Wraith fire like a three mile away shot. Yep. Just some and Wraith insane. Is so proud of that shot too. He's like, "Oh yeah, I know this is gonna hit. Let's just let's just all take a moment to watch this." Poof. Yeah, it's like number fifty. Yep. And his uh, head just 
mystifies. It just turns into a mist at this bullet. He has some crazy bullets, by the way. Oh, um, the turbo penetrator rounds and stuff. Like he, 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 he broke the high Castellan's ion shield. Well, he okay. He he, uh, he. I don't think he broke the shield. Well, he disrupted it. I guess. Yeah. He, well, yeah. It was already people. hurt. Yeah, but still. <laughs> right, because he had shield breaker rounds. I think. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that was a thing. I'm like, oh, okay, come on. There's no bullet that's gonna penetrate a knight's ion shield, right? And he's like, oh, bet. Actually, that was the thing. Is he he loaded his mag in a certain way where it was like break the shield. And then because the castle has four melta guns on its chest and they needed to get rid of them to let um, Sigatrix get close. So he was like shooting off melta guns off a moving knight from like three miles away. Just <laughs> pop, pop, pop. Got him. It was now that now that's the one part that I will say was not uh, uh, nerfed. His aim <laughs> was perfectly fine. Yeah. I, he, I thought he was so OP. He did so many crazy things in this book. Like, damn. But um, Should the for Vindicare, when, once they uh, once they because that was also a big part was the temples thing. Sigatrix is a, is a person who understands humans, cares about humans in a sense, yep. like gets the social aspects. Cone could care less. <laughs> Cone is is just learning, <laughs> and uh, and Wraith is a very like we do it this way or we do it no other way. He's very yeah. like close minded. Very plan oriented. We got to stick to the plan. It has to be planned out. We can't just, you know, go by the seat of our pants or anything. Yeah. Which is why the the little end gauntlet they have is kind of a great moment where uh Sycorax is fighting through a hallway of like uh mutated admech from the Conqueror worm. Mm-hmm. And she's just doing all kinds of wild and crazy <laughs> shit. She's like, she's like, f- like flattening herself to the size of like a pancake and crawling like a like a like the Exorcist crab like across the walls and yep. doing flips and contortions. And all the while, Wraith is on this perch like bang, ch- ch- bang, bang ch- ch- and they're working playing. together, yep. which is what yeah. they weren't doing before. They were like having a, a, a together fight, and it was like this nice like, hey, here we go. It all, it's all coming to head, yeah. you know. And what, what was the artificer's name? I think it was an artificer that was um, the head Cone lady. Found, yeah, yeah. The cone found all this stuff out. It was like Teleran, Tele, uh, something like that. She spoke like an old woman. Yeah, and that she like transformed into some real chaosy stuff. Like, didn't she turn into like a literal robotic centipede? Because she was the one that I guess the Iron Warrior worked with. Yeah, something? something like that. And then yeah. Gwyn attached herself to an armager and fired the auto cannon at her until the barrel spun dry. <laughs> well done. Just well bop, done. bop, bop. Um, That'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll, that'll do. do. That'll do. The only part that was really difficult for me to keep track of was uh, Rackhan fighting all the knights, mainly because I oh, couldn't yeah. remember which knight name belonged to who. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think was the was, there was one that was like the Shield of Dominion. I always got that one confused with. I was like, "Oh, why is he fighting? Uh, why is he fighting Dagger Crane?" It's like, "Oh no, Shield of Dominion is the one that Yuma's in. The Crown of Dominion is the one that Dagger Crane got corrupted in." And yeah, I I, I had a hard time keeping up with the night names too. Oh my god, I forgot about that part. There's a part when they were trying to uh, get rid of successors to the throne line. And then Sigatrix just kicked a dude like into a, a cage of a of, of a fucking like giant snake. Oh, that's right. That's and right. They, yep. Giant big old snake and just eats everything. And yeah. That was really funny. I forgot about that when their plan like kind of fell apart and they were just like, ah, oh, damn. Well, you know what? We want this dagger crane guy in, so let's just kill everybody until they pick him. <laughs> it was that, that was that was a murder spree. That was pretty hilarious. It was actually kind of a funny little point of of comedy of them just going back yeah. and forth. Also, did you did you get a little bit of like uh, sexual tension between Wraith and Cicatrix? Cicatrix. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I was about to say like, particularly when they were smoking cigars in like the truck. After yeah. murdering another guy, it was kind of like, hey, uh, this is kind of fun. I mean, I knew they probably wouldn't end up together because no way with two temples, you know. You know I mean, no way would a Vindicare get it on with the Calidus? I disagree. I think if I'm going to get it on with anyone, I'm going to get it on with the person who shapeshifts. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you got to be careful, though. You got to be careful with that because, you know, if you make her upset, she can make your life a nightmare. Well, yeah, but you know, she's, it's a, like, oh, she's yeah, an look, assassin. She yeah, can make true. my life a nightmare no matter what. <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, the, the only, that's really the only part that kind of threw me was figuring out everything going on. But the book ends relatively well. Yeah, they, everything's tied up with a nice little bow. The good old, um, good old Rackhan becomes the new high monarch, but there is a, uh, it, it's no longer a high monarch. It's like a high monarch couple, a, yeah, a wife so and spouse. You have, yeah, so you have a representative Strider and a representative Rao, and they each keep each other in check so that no one ever takes too much power or no one ever uh, leans too far in the interest of their house. Exactly. And and so you keep that up and they're sending knights to war for Gilliman. Oh, I totally forgot. There was a part when Sycorax had not had her polymorphine for a while. Oh, and she yeah. yells like, damn, that blue bastard. And then she <laughs> swaps back and I was like, you did it. You did it, Gabe's Workshop. You called Gilliman a blueberry. We've a done blueberry. it. Blueberry. Yep, yep. Well, doesn't she? She's about to call him a blue bastard. But then doesn't she stop and be like, damn this galaxy? Because she's yeah. afraid that. You know, since there's always recording devices, if somebody hears her uh, talking stink about a Primark, uh, she might get into a little bit of trouble. Yeah, but it was She's kind definitely of funny. pissed at Gilliman, yeah. It was hilarious, the use of the word blue. <laughs> yeah, you blue bastard. But, um, I mean, other than that, I- I'd say that the real strength of this book is just the, the lore building on all the temples and... I think Robert Rath has a really good job at making his characters. The assassins are supposed to be like stone cold killers that are mostly emotionless, uh, which is why I think that they've been maybe nerfed in a slight way because you have to give them a little bit. There's got to be some emotion. Yeah, has to be some emotion. They can't be all powerful. They have to have some weakness so that the plan can kind of fall apart and they have to like piece it back together. Yeah. But this would be it is another one of the incredible, incredibly good 40K books that shows off all kinds of awesome stuff. It, it provides a great deal of um, of uh, visual or like visual fidelity with like the knights and lore. And I just I really, really like this book. This could be a 40K movie. I feel like you could make yes. a mini series out of this and it would be perfect. You, you know perfect. who I would use to? I would 100% think that the Arcane studio, Ooh, I, I don't think it's technically yeah. Riot Games. I'm assuming it's contracted. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But whoever is the animation studio of Arcane, I think would do incredible with a five episode, hour long each mini series oh, on this yeah. book. It would be perfect. Oh, yeah, it'd be so good, too. Ah. I mean, you wouldn't get any Astartes or anything, but, like, man, all the knights and all the assassins you'd get, it's just, oh, this would be great. Oh, perfect. I mean, it's I would much rather it be that way anyway. Give give me something different. <laughs> yeah. Also, were you, you – know, as soon as they introduced Rackan and they told a little bit about him, were, did you see it coming from, like, the beginning of the book? I was like, they're going to they're gonna find some way to finagle him into being the monarch. Uh, I wasn't sure about that. I was actually genuinely positive they were going to kill him. Um, I, I thought they were going to kind of figured they weren't going to kill him. You know, I mean, they said they were going to. Once they reached Dominion, it's like, well, we can't have two rat cans. That'd be stupid. That's inefficient. Um, but I don't know. As soon as they introduced him, and I was like, man, he was at the very start of the story, and he seems too important. Man, he's he's they're gonna he, something's gonna happen, something's gonna go wrong, and he's gonna be the only candidate left, and he's gonna get the get the job. I, I, I maybe, feel like maybe, they telegraphed uh, that a little hard. Maybe let me rephrase that. Maybe I I thought that Rackham would turn on them. I thought that once oh. Rackham would get his spot back down, he'd be like, "Screw these guys, they're awful and terrible. I'm going against them." Um, but of course, the way the entire thing turned out, it yeah. would it didn't work that way. But yeah, yeah. Um, I'm glad that Rackan lived because the more I learned about him, the more I was hoping he wouldn't die. But I thought he would. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's sort but, of uh, a tragic uh, turn. But yeah. I could see what you mean, though. Him becoming the next High Monarch. I thought that would be what they would do too. But once uh, certain situations started happening, I wasn't sure anymore. Like the last act. Yeah. But then it then it worked out for his favor yeah. anyway. So once he got into Leviathan, it was pretty obvious, though. 
Yeah, once that happened, he wasn't I was going like, All anywhere, right. and he was like, "Oh, what do you mean? All the other candidates are dead or corrupted? I wonder what what he's going to do at the end of the book." Because <laughs> there there are three types of knights: there's armagers, questorus, and dominus. And um, Dominus class were the Crown of Dominion and Leviathan. So yeah. when he got in the other Dominus class, up, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Now I get it. Yeah, and there's, anyway, there's two crowns now. But yeah, go ahead. There is. Um, you know, actually, funny enough, uh, this book has, has a quote. And I think I already mentioned once, but it has a quote that I find really prolific. And I might even like hang on my wall at some point. Oh, what um, was that? It was the start of one of the chapters, and it was um, a serf serves a, a house, a house serves a baron, a baron serves a knight, and a knight serves a monarch. So who does the monarch serve? He serves each and every subject because um, the the crown is not a pyramid, but a circle. Ah, yes, that was a good one. Yep. Uh, Yvarnius Cow, High Monarch of Dominion, on his teachings on the Code Chivalric. Man, he w- he was a good king too. Like he was a good guy. He was he was the best king. Like his people loved him. Drask loved him. Everybody loved him. But Dawn of Slaughter it's, messed it all up. Mm-hmm. I um I wonder, uh, what was it? it you, I don't know. What, you have the same thing, but the beginnings of these chapters reminded me a lot of Soul Hunter. Where it was um, the War Sage Malkarian oh, yeah, the war exerted sage. from his work, the Tenebrous <laughs> Path. And I was like, this kind of gives me the same vibe. It, it is the same vibe, isn't it? Yeah, I kind of forgot about the uh, those quotes at the beginning of the, the trilogy books. Yeah. Well, huge glowing recommendation from both of us. Hell yeah. All Hell right. yeah. Are we, are we going out of 10 or are we just saying, nah, go read it. It's really good. I'd give it minimum nine. Uh, probably nine point something, but I'd say at the bottom end of nine. I would probably give it a, a solid eight, not because it wasn't great, just because like nines and tens are like otherworldly phenomenal. And this was really, really good. But I don't know. I want to reserve those nines and tens for just like bombastic stuff, you know? Now you know me and how much I love regular stories told with Warhammer paint um, <laughs> because of the ones that often do the best. And so much yes. like Bloodlines, this one for me is a, is a solid nine. That's fair. All solid right, eight a solid eight recommend highly glowing recommendation regardless. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, uh, next book we have is Storm of Iron. Ooh, yeah, this is Shy's recommendation. She told us this one was an absolute kook fest, and we were gonna really enjoy some traitor shenanigans. And I wanted more chaos. Hell yeah, brother! Hell, Hell yeah. yeah! All right, take us home, DK. Um, Just kidding, I've already had a mic recording, idiot. <laughs> 